Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to bounce on this Tascam 424 Mark II. I've been doing some recording with this uh, Pocket Operator Rhythm, the PO12. It's a pretty nice sounding cheap drum machine, but it's got some limitations. If you're not familiar with it, the way it works is you've got up to 16 patterns of 16 steps. And while you can do a sort of live performance thing where you kind of chain those patterns together infinitely, I'm not completely confident that I would do that accurately while I was recording, so I prefer to chain the patterns together. Now I'm treating those 16 steps as quavers, so I'm basically getting two bars out of each 16 step pattern. Even that way, because I can only chain together 16 patterns, it means I can only program 32 bar sections of the song, and 32 bars is pretty short. So the way I've gone about this is to record the first 32 bars onto track 1 and then I'm manually pressing start on my next programmed section of 32 bars on track 2 the next section is track 3 and then the final, it's not 32 bars, probably 16 or something like that I'll record it back on track 1 and what I'm going to be doing is blending those three channels onto one channel on track 4 and then I can record over the material on tracks 1, 2, 3 and I've still got three tracks left to make the song with A more typical scenario where you might bounce might be say you've recorded three microphones on a drum kit simultaneously you know what's that like a kick drum mic a snare mic and an overhead mic then you can blend those three onto one monaural track on channel four now the way that i'm going to achieve that is by how i set up the record function switches on this model so we can see that for each track we've got the choice of bus left safe or direct mode when your record function switch is set to direct, then channel one of your mixer is recording directly to track one of your tape, track two of your mixer is corresponding directly to track two of your tape, etc, etc. The other way you can do it is you've got to think that the left and right bus are two separate monaural tracks and you're using the pan control on each channel to dictate whether channel one of your mixer is going to the left monaural bus or the right monaural bus or both. So what I can do is if I pan channels one, two and three hard right, and then I set channel four to bus right. And what's happening is all three of those channels, when they're hitting the pan control, the pans direct them all to one monaural channel. And then that's being recorded to track four of the tape. So it's important that we set channel four to micro line, whereas channels one, two, three are all set to tape. I've got the sound of the 424 coming out through speakers. They're out of shot. I've just done it that way so I don't have to bugger around with my Zoom recorder and line up the audio. So it's going to be camera audio rather than the best possible representation of the audio in the Tascam. I'll probably in post-production I'll, I'll speed it up so you see the transition of the three sections of the pocket operator jumping from track one to track two to track three and back to track one but they're all being printed to track four. And just before I start, I've made a couple of adjustments so that channel 4 meter's going into the red a little bit. And that means I'm going to get a little bit of tape saturation on the final track. So at this point, channel 1's going to channel 4. And here you're going to see it jump to track 2. So there's a little bit of doubling on the kick drum there. I don't mind those kind of like flaws in a recording. I think it's part of the fun in recording on a four track. In a second we'll see it go from track two to track three. Here. And Jack jumps to back to track one. So now if I set, sorry not set, turn off those three channels, put that back to tape. Just to preview, there's nothing coming out of tracks one, two, three. That's all of them combined. You can hear it's slightly more compressed. That's the uh, tape compression because I 
hit the tape hard coming out of these three. Just before I close up the video, I just want to point out that this way of doing things is equivalent to setting these um, record function switches to bus mode. If you've got an earlier model of Porter Studio, say a 244 or 144, this is the default way it works. Tracks 1 and 3 are hardwired to your left channel, tracks 2 and 4 are hardwired to your right channel. So that means that if you're trying to record on track 1, you need to be panned hard left during recording. If you're pan center, you're basically attenuating the signal that's coming out of the fader by 50% and if you turn hard right you're going to get silence. I can tell you there's been a number of times I've sold a 244 on eBay and they've come back to me and gone oh it's not working they haven't read the manual their pan controls turn to the right when it should be the left and so on. Anyway thanks for watching hope to see you again soon sometime probably with the finished track. Bye for now.